folks, the plot thickens as we get more information about the Chesa saga yeah, and the link to the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya and his office. The deputy president has of course firmly denied any involvement yeah, in any fraudulent deal. But that has not watered down the fascination Kenyans have in this case. And it has not even deleted yeah, the pointers that are emerging that will raise any eyebrows. The most explosive of these pointers is that investigators are now saying that an MP is involved. Yeah, a very vocal MP from Central Province. And that MP is female. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the thing here is that there are not many vocal female MPs from Central Province. No, there are very few. The whole idea here is that the other people are told that she was influential in government circles. Yeah, she'd be able to push through yeah, this deal to sell this military equipment to Kenya. And this complainant, yeah, this CEO, was taken to see her in her office. Now, now, now. If this information is correct and detectives are right, then it links this fraudulent deal clearly to politics. So it would raise the question, who were the political links to the deal? Was it the vocal female MP from Central Province? I don't think so. Not on our own. What? This is getting serious. But there's more. Much more. Now in your screens right now, there's a photograph. One of the people in that photograph is Bonachesa. And then the other female person. <laughs> she has a very close resemblance to a diplomat, Kenyan diplomat, based in Poland. I think I'll just leave it there. Now I talk about that at length in my latest weekly intelligence briefings, number 29, which is out. In case you're not yet a member, details are on your screen right now on how you can become a member pub immediately. An amazing offer actually. Yeah, and what is more, everybody who becomes a member now will also get a free copy yeah, of my hot sizzler of a book called The President's Lovers, which has been described by many, not me, as Moto Yakuotea Mbali San. So go for it. Of course, if you're already a member, you can also get the same uh, ebook. If you don't have it already, yeah, by sending a blank email to that email address you see on your screens now. Fascinatingly, detectives are now saying that they suspect, or rather they believe, that the same gang, <laughs> they call it a gang, the same gang which is involved in this Echesa Manenos is the very same group of people who in February last year conned the Samir Africa chairman now should Meradi out of 10 million Kenya shillings yeah. by pretending that they had been sent by President Uhuru Kenyatta. What? Now, the whole scheme appears to have been very sophisticated apart from visiting the member of parliament. Mr. Stanley Kozulowski, yeah, the complainant, CEO of the company Echo Advanced Technologies, which is the company that was made to believe that they were actually selling military equipment to the government of Kenya, and not some con men who wanted to get money out of them. Mr. Kozolwoski says he was introduced to a General Juma, a man who was dressed in full military attire, yeah, and he had very serious security around him. And in the two meetings he had with this General Juma, General Juma arrived in a fleet of military vehicles with military registration numbers. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that raises another very nagging question. Where did this General Juma, who's obviously not in the military, 
get access to these military vehicles belonging to the Kenya Defense Forces. Where? How? <laughs> now, according to detectives, yeah, this fake General Juma is in fact a person who used to work for the Kenya Police Service, a former corporal, and is one of the people who was arrested along with Rashid Dechesa yeah, and has appeared in court. Now, according to me, this is getting very messy and very worrying. And I'll tell you what is really worrying. To pull off some of these things yeah, that went down yeah, in this fraudulent deal, you would need to be a very high-ranking member of the Kenyan government. You'd need to be very powerful indeed to be able to pull off yeah, some of the things described here. Yeah, like get somebody in a military vehicle with a convoy of military vehicles to visit an MP at the KICC yeah, without anybody taking notice, without anybody stopping you to ask you what you're doing. Bottom line, it took a lot to be able to convince Bwana Kolowski that this was a genuine deal, that he was actually getting a contract from the government of Kenya. And you will agree with me, not just anybody can be able to do that. No. In other words, there is no way Bwana Chesa could have been working alone. No. There's another big heavyweight, a big name, yeah, behind all this. So who is it? It seems that investigators may not know yeah, who it is yet. Although my suspicion is that they do. But they have still not been able to gather enough information to arrest that person. They have still not been able to gather enough information to link that person to this fraudulent scheme. Now, according to the complainant, Banakolowski, he says that Rashid Echesa was introduced to him as a personal assistant to the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. In fact, that is one of the charges against former CS Rashid Echesa. And he has firmly denied it. But if it is true, it suggests that Bona Echesa must have done one or two things yeah, that convinced yeah, Bona Kolowski and his team that indeed he was who he said he was. You see, CEOs of companies like this one handling billions of shillings, millions of US dollars, cannot be stupid people. Yeah, they're very bright people, very sharp. Indeed, he says something very interesting. After I met this General Juma of the military twice, at the signing of the contract, he recognized the same person. But this time they were not in military attire. Yeah, instead, they were dressed in a broken suit. And that struck him. He found this very strange. Because at the signing of the contract, something very important, and you're the main person involved, you're the general in the army, how do you turn up dressed casually? Back to my point. So, Bwana Rashid Echesa, if this is true, would have had to do a lot to prove yeah, that he was actually a personal assistant to the deputy president. And even more puzzling, where was the real personal assistant when all this was going down? Yeah, because bang inside the office of the deputy president, the president's actual personal assistant would have needed to disappear or to play ball or he would have needed to be fooled by Buona Chesa in a very major way so that things were happening in his office and he was not aware. Deals were being signed in an office where he's in charge. He was not aware. <laughs> in fact, I talk at length about this man, Farouk Kibet, yeah, the real personal assistant to the DP, in my latest weekly intelligence briefings, number 29. Make sure you don't miss it. Now, the latest is that Bwana Chesa and his co-accused have been freed on a bail of Kenya shillings one million each. But the investigations are in high gear. And that is very significant. Because you know you don't take people to court unless and until you have evidence. 
you take them to court when your investigations are complete or almost complete. And so these fresh inquiries, this high gear of investigations, seems to suggest that investigators plan to charge somebody else or other people. Wa 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 wa. He maneno na kuambia. <laughs> Wacha tu. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.